Good morning, everybody. Children, please, can you leave for your little church? The intention of the Mass is for Timmy Maddox. Yesterday I was informed by the son of Jerry Johnson, who is known to many of us, that he passed away at Arrow Park Hospital in the early hours of yesterday morning. Please remember him in your prayers. Wilf Burns is also sick and in hospital. Please also remember to pray for him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my thought, through my thought, through my mysterious thought. As Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, 
lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas carried on from Persia till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. When the meeting broke up, many Jews and devout converts joined Paul and Barnabas. And in their talks with them, Paul and Barnabas urged them to remain faithful to the grace God had given them. The next Sabbath, almost the whole town assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used his blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first. But since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations, so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. He made the pagans very happy to hear this, and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and the leading men of the city and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm is, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, sheep of his flock. <laughs> Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing for joy. We are his people, sheep of his flock. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw her huge number impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palms in their hands. One of the elders said to me, these are the people who have been through the great persecution, and because they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb, they now stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his sanctuary. And the one who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. They will never hunger or thirst again. Neither the sun nor scorching wind will ever plague them because the lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep and my own know me. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, The sheep that belongs to me listens to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never be lost. And no one will ever steal them from me. The Father who gave them to me is greater than anyone. And no one can steal from the Father. And the Father and I are one. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. For more than 50 years now, the fourth Sunday of Easter has been designated by the church as a day of prayer for priestly and religious vocation. It stresses the shepherding of the flock of Christ, shepherds who in our day will carry out the ministry of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ with joy. In the early catacombs of Rome, we find graphic images of the Good Shepherd. Often they show the figure of a young Christ who carries a lamb across his shoulders. The frescoes show the intimacy between the shepherd and his sheep, between Christ and his beloved. In contrast to ancient Roman pagan tombs, no longer is the image that of a Roman warrior but rather that of Christ, who carries his sheep warmly and lovingly. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, presents us with an image of compassion, love, and care, a person in whom we can trust and have confidence. The Good Shepherd only seeks the good of his sheep, no ill. In order to enter eternal life, we must listen to Jesus and obey him. We have to tune our minds to the sound of his voice. Self-centeredness can make us deaf to the voice of Jesus. Easy options can draw us into easier paths than the one he has traced. Pressure to abandon Christian principles is inevitable, but God is faithful and he will not abandon us to be tempted beyond our strength. The Father has entrusted us to his Son. The same God who kept faith with Jesus by raising him from the dead will also raise us by his power. The spiritual reward of staying close to our Good Shepherd is described in the book of Revelation which says, They will never hunger or thirst again, for the Lamb who is at the throne will be their shepherd and will lead them to springs of living water. As we receive this Good Shepherd in Holy Communion, we trust him to lead us to that living water and bless us with closer relationship with him personally and with others in his name. Paul and Barnabas worked tirelessly for the spread of the gospel. Although Paul is initially well received in Antioch, by the second day, some of the Jewish people organized themselves to oppose him. As the argument develops, Paul sees this as an opportunity to preach to the Gentiles and further spread the word of God. Paul and Barnabas disregarded every attempt by their critics to stop them. Threats were ignored and they seemed driven by an inner God-given sense of mission to promote faith in Jesus. They spoke boldly and made an impact. A courageous proclamation of the gospel to our contemporaries can be as fruitful now as it was in the apostolic times. All the baptized, particularly those who are confirmed, are bound to spread the faith. Laity as well as priests and religious are in the service of the risen Lord. Our faith urges us to take personal part in the work of evangelization. 
The church today invites us to pray for vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, since such vocations play an active part in handing on the faith. All Christians believe that God is love and goodness, but love and goodness need to be communicated to others in season and out of season. At this present moment, with the war in Ukraine, there is misery and untold suffering experienced by innocent people, especially children. One woman expressed it in this way. The thing I fear most is war, and we have nothing but war. We have been fighting, and when you go out, all you can hear is the bombs, and you can hear the explosions, and you can hear rifle fire, and you can hear the tanks roaring in, and you can hear the arrests and screams, and that's all you hear day by day. I could not believe that we would live under this kind of world, and it could go on and on and on. The noise of war, the terror of war, but especially no peace, not even hope of peace. Jesus needs many more hearts and hands. The more we can witness to the joy, hope and love which comes from the gospel of Christ, the Good Shepherd, the more we can hope for peace a peace that the world cannot give. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, from God, light and light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for our church that it may continue to announce courageously the message of the good news of the risen Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our faith that, like St. Paul, we may remain faithful to the grace God has given us and be a light for the nations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the people of Ukraine that there may be an end to their injustice and suffering. We pray for world leaders to have the wisdom and courage in coming to the aid of Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick in mind and body and for those who care for them. We pray for those who have gone before us May they rest in the peace of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us take a moment in silence to pray for our own intentions.
Let us ask our, for Our Lady's intercession as we pray. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among, among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners now and at Amen. the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into the world to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that he, the Good Shepherd, may protect us from all harm, so that we may always do your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today in Little Church, we heard that Jesus is our good shepherd. He will never let any of his sheep be lost or stolen. He will always care for us. Thank you. Well done.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending thy spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. So then the Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, brings the fullness of charity, 
Kellett fel Francis, de akar beszélt a Roman felső. And most our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Lord who died in your mercy, grant the lemons to light in your face, and mercy on us all we pray, because of the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph and Spouse, the blessed apostles, with all the saints and pleasing throughout the ages. We too may merit to be coerced to eternal life, praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. 
Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Father Roger is back from Bolivia. He was here this morning for the first mass. And uh, tomorrow morning, uh, there was going to be just a word, service of the word, because I'll be away for a day. But he told me this morning he'll be happy to say mass. So the, those who are preparing the service of the word, don't bother. Father Roger will be here for Mass tomorrow morning, and uh, those who like to attend the morning Masses, please do so. On Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the evening, Bishop Mark will be having a Thanksgiving Mass at St. Michael's and All Angels for supporters of uh, Missio and the Red Boxes. On Friday, Mass is at 9 because the girls from the college are coming over for Mass. Novena to Our Lady of Perpetual Help on Saturdays after Mass, followed by the Rosary for this month of May. Please remember to pray for all our sick people.
people. The various charities are there. If you wish to support any, please do so. And continue to bring stuff for the food bank, please. So we are still hoping to continue with the soup launches and uh, we are short of people who can help. If you are able to, please let me know of Peter Francis. Um, next Sunday there will be a second basket for the Holy Land and the money goes towards preserving sacred places, assisting the region's uh, Christian minorities, and preparing forming candidates for the priesthood, as well as investing in education of Palestinian Muslims to build a country where mutual respect reigns. Winners of the 500 Club for February, Ron Ainsley, in March, Paul Nelson. So we'll be saying the rosary on Saturdays after mass throughout uh, May, the month of May. There will be no liturgy group meeting tomorrow. Little church next Sunday. Baptism preparation next meeting on the 9th of June at 7.30. If you wish to convert to the Catholic faith, please see me. COVID continues and we are asked to continue wearing our face masks if we can, and respect other people's spaces. If you have any symptoms, please don't come to church. Stay at home until the COVID test negative. The Little Way Healing Ministries next event is on the 17th of May, seven o'clock to nine by Zoom. If you need bereavement support, please contact the number which is there at the bottom and somebody will help you. These little cards have been prepared and uh, as you go out, you will be given uh, one of them. And what is there is all about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. We are considering having a parish barbecue during the afternoon of Saturday, the 4th of June to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. So at different levels, celebrations will be taking place all over the country. But we want to do something before that to show support for the Queen and parishes are doing it all over the country. If you would like to come on Saturday the 4th of June, uh, the time probably surely will be in the afternoon. If you would like to come, please enter your name uh, below and number of persons you, you would like to come with who will accompany you and return this card to the church by next Sunday so that we'll have an idea of the number to cater for. So it's simple, your name, and if it's just you, you put one in the box. If you have other people to come, you write it there. And then we will, I would say, the ladies, you know about these things, put your ideas together and speak to, to Pam. Uh, I don't know about catering. You, you, you organize that. Uh, and we'll see what, what happens on that. It's, it's a good thing, a social event. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. <laughs>